Hey guys, Richard here, back again with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you my other Gold Paladin standard deck, which is the Pelennor variant, which is also a budget deck for those who are interested in getting into Gold Paladin but don't want to be dropping all that money on those Azels. So it's still a pretty fun deck, and I still think it, no matter uh, which Gold Paladin deck you prefer, this one is still fun to play. So I'm just going to get right into it. So the starter is still going to be Crimson Lion Cub Kyrf. Uh, no other starter you can really play in standard. So yeah, when you ride upon it, draw a card. So next up uh, for our grade threes is Pelennor. So we're going to be running four copies of Pelennor. So Pelennor's skill is um, when he's in your hand at the end of the battle that your rear guard attacked hit a vanguard that's grade three or greater. You can counter blast one and soul blast three. Let me move this down a little bit. Soul blast three. And you can ride this card from your hand as stand, and it gets drive minus one. Um, probably not going to be using that skill that often. The important skill is his other skill, which is when he's on van, at the end of the battle that your rear guard attacked a vanguard, you kind of bless when you return that unit to your hand. So that allows you to create multi attacks. Uh, you can combo it off with din drain, so you can call something, call it counter charge. You can kind of bless, pop it back. Um, and it just ensures that you're going to be basically be able to recall targets over and over. And the goal of this deck is kind of to empty your soul as fast as possible and hit for really high numbers. So definitely you're going to have to be riding on him for the entire uh, playstyle of this deck. Uh, on top of the Pelennor deck, you run four copies of Mox Slash Dragon. And I know that Mox Slash does not have a gift, but this is essentially going to be the win condition of your deck. So his skill is Van or Rear. When this attacks, you counter blast one, call a card from your hand to the rear guard circle, and it gets and this unit gets plus 5k. So the whole point is you're gonna be using Mock Slash to call something, and then you use Pelinor to put it back into your hand. So you pretty much combo this with Dindrain, where you call it with Mock Slash, Dindrain to unflip, and then counter blast again to pull back Dindrain. And then you can use another Mock Slash if you have another one, which is why you want to be running multiple copies. And then you just kind of do that cycle until you have no soul and, you know, get off multiple attacks. So Mock Slash is a really good card. Uh, you definitely want to be running four copies in this version. You can try it with three, but you want to ensure that you have one in your hand. So running four is where you want to go with. So last but not least, since this is an Excel deck, uh, running grade threes, a lot of grade threes is not that big of a deal. So we're running two more Sagamore. Sagamar is our backup ride. He also helps empty the soul, lets you draw a card, uh, helps proc off the skills of Dindrain, which is really nice. I only run two copies just because of space. Um, you can kind of mess around with the grade two lineup if you want to add more Sagamores if you want. You could drop a Mock Slash for another Sagamore if you would like to do that too. Uh, Sagamore is still just a really good uh, backup and a rear guard to run. On to the grade twos. So I did say this was a budget variant, so this would probably be the most expensive card you would have to buy, which is not even that expensive. It's Player of the Holy Bow Vivian. So Vivian's skill is when it's placed from hand, you kind of bless one, soul bless one, look at the top three cards of your deck, call one, put the rest on the bottom, and Vivian gets 3k. So this card helps you thin out your deck so that you can still have triggers remaining, helps you find targets, it helps you proc off abilities of Dindrain if you find it in the deck. Um, you can use, you can combo this with Mock Slash since you're calling it from hand through Mock Slash skill to pull out more rear guards during the battle phase. Um, emptying your soul again, really important for this deck, you want to empty your soul really quickly. So you want, one, you want to run four copies so that you can ride it. So this is your ride target and you definitely want to be running four. And it's not that expensive from what I've seen. So it shouldn't be too difficult for uh, budget players that are trying to find a good uh, deck to play that's not like way too crazy. So this is the card that's going to be the the end result of your soul being completely depleted. It's um, Knight of Heroism, Tornus. So Tornus' skill is if you have one card in your soul, he gets 3k, and if you have no cards in your soul, he gets 8k. So, uh, yeah, basically you're going to be using... All of these skills, Dindrain, Vivian, Sagramore, um, maybe even Pelinor's skill if you want to Soul Blast the three, just empty your soul completely right away. Um, if you can get it off, you have your 17k beat stick. 
Uh, you can, another thing is because he's a really good uh, beater, you're going to be swinging with him and then you can call it, you can use Pelinor skill to put it back into your hand and then use Mock Slash to call it back out. So Mock Slash and Tornus are going to be your beat sticks for 17k, going back and forth. Uh, the counter blasting is a little bit of an issue with this deck. Uh, so having a card that gets all that power uh, just for your soul being empty and not uh, having any counter blasts or costs necessarily is still really good. So run four Tornus, of course. Um, this is a budget build. So um, we're going to be running two copies of Nemean Lion. Nemean Lion's purpose isn't just because he's a rare. Uh, he helps you with your hand issue where you know, um, you're going to have cards that you want to keep in your hand to call for targets um, during uh, your next turns when it's your opponent's turn. So having Nemean Lion available as a shield fodder is really nice. So his effect is uh, Van, Rear, or Guard Circle when it's placed. He gets 3k power and 5k shield. So he's a 10k shield, like a grade 1, or he's a 12k attacker. And you can use this if you're trying, if you want to call a target, you can call it to an Excel circle, becomes a 22k attacker, and then you can use Pelinor's skill to bounce it back to your hands. So you can use it as shield later. So I like having that option, or having this in the deck for that ability. And I use it a couple times with play testing, so it's there. And it's also nice because it's a budget card for a budget build. You can uh, substitute this for Bowmane since we do run Gareth in the deck. But um, you know, it's really up to you. Bowmane's not also is also not that expensive. So you can try if you want to be a little more aggressive, Bowmane's would be a good choice, but also because Bowmane's does require you to discard cards, and a lot of the cards in your hand you want to be keeping for this like um combo that you're going to do with Mox Slash and Pelinor. So I like having Nemean and Lion there as like guard fodder versus um, using Bowmane's to call it and then have to discard something else. And lastly for Greg 2's one copy of Lapier Shooter. Um, gotta keep the the rabbit furry aesthetic going, you know? So uh, I only run one Lapier just because I think Lapier is just a really weird card in general. His skill is when he's in your hand, at the end of the battle that your grade 2 or greater vanguard attacked, you can count plus 1, call this to rear, and he gets 5k. So, the reason I think he's really weird is because it's after your vanguard attacks, meaning after you get your trigger checks, then you call it. Which means if you have, typically, like, because we're running front triggers, your front row is going to be full already, so after you already swing, you're putting your front row triggers on those, and if you have an empty circle ready, you know, for it, or also like if you have a rested rear guard from that's attacked earlier, you know, you could call it there and get another attack out, but Mock Slash is kind of the same thing, whereas like, you know, if you have Mock Slash on rear, any card in your hand can be called when you attack with it for the same cost, kind of last one. So I feel like that's why Mock Slash is better, but if you don't have Mock Slash in hand and you have Lop Ear Shooter, it's a good substitute. So it's essentially kind of like a fifth Mock Slash in a way. Um, it's also a rabbit, so yeah. Rabbit, Rabbit Pals. More Rabbit Pals. We're running four copies of Listener of Truth, Dindrain, for our Rabbit deck. So, uh, Dindrain skills when it's placed by a card ability, you Soul Blast one, and you can pick one of two abilities, which is A, draw a card, or B, counter charge and give this unit 3k. I'm gonna always say this every time I talk about Dindrain, you don't get 3k when you draw. Um, moving on. Uh, you basically always use the counter charge with this deck. You don't really need to worry about drawing cards. Um, you really need to worry about your counter blast, so you're pretty much always going to be using the counter charge ability for this card. And the 3k also really helps when, it, when you're trying to swing at force numbers, so it's not a 17k, it's a 20k when you call it to an Excel circle. Um, like I explained earlier, you do Pelinor with Mock Slash Dragon in order to, you know, you... Use Mock Slash, call it Dindrain. Move this over a little bit. Use Mock Slash, call it Dindrain, and then use Pelinor to put Dindrain back, and you can use another Mock Slash to keep that going. So it kind of helps like balance out the number of costs you're using for calling out cards and attacks, and emptying your soul at the same time using Dindrain skill to make a Tornus bigger throughout the game and more quickly. So that's pretty much that for Dindrain. Um, next up running four copies of Haugen. Haugen is a really good card in this standard. I like it because it's kind of like an OTT card in a way, where 
You get to uh, manipulate the top card of your deck if you meet a condition. Uh, its skill is when your Vanguard's attack hits, you look at the top card of your deck, call a, call a card with grade less than or equal to your Vanguard, uh, and call it to rear. If you do call, you have to retire Haugen on rear. So it helps you call out more units. Uh, the skill is also really good if you ride it and you attack when you're going second. Uh, because you don't have a Haugen on rear, you don't have to retire anything if you call another grade one. So it helps you do multi-attacks. And it, you can just you also don't have to call the top card of your deck. If you look at it, you can just put it back. So if you look at the top and it's a trigger, you can just put it back. And then you know what card's coming on your next check. So being able to manipulate your deck and be able to see if you get triggers or not is pretty cool. And being able to call out more targets is also really good. Uh, lastly, for our grade ones, uh, four copies of Gareth, because Gareth is a good card. Uh, his effect is when you call it from a card ability, you kind of lost one and it gets 10k. So you can call it out with Vivian, uh, call it out with Mock Slash. You know, those are the cards you're basically going to be using to or Sagamore as well, you, those are the cards you're going to be using to proc off this effect. Um, like I said before, if you want to run Bone Mains, so you can thin this out. Excuse me. So you can thin out your deck, pull out Gareth. Um, you can do that as well if you want to be a little more aggressive. If you are a more budget player and kind of want to just focus on getting the Vivians and the Double Rares, um, you can just focus on that. So lastly, for Triggers... Uh, standard Gold Paladin's problem is it really doesn't have a lot of rearguard pressure and numbers other than the Excel circles. So running the stand triggers, stand triggers, those don't exist anymore. Running the front triggers is really good in my opinion. Um, because if you run crits and you give the crit to one unit, uh, because shield values are so much higher nowadays with grade ones and uh, grade zeros having like, like 15 and 20 and 10k shields, uh, having like a 20, uh, 22 or 32k beater with a crit while all your other numbers are kind of just the same. Uh, it really doesn't do much for you during your turns, especially if you're making all these big fields. So take advantage of your field, take advantage of the fact that you have access to like four, four front row rear guards and run front triggers. So, you know, and then the bigger the numbers, the more pressure your opponent has to put when they're guarding. And then because you're multi-attacking a lot with Mock Slash and Pelinor, you can take advantage of that. So um, this is a budget build, but like draw PGs are not expensive at all. So I highly recommend if you are trying to build a deck, I really don't think the grade one PGs that come in the booster sets are worth it, especially when the draw PGs are like a dollar, maybe two dollars max. So please just invest in these cards first if you can. If you're trying to make a budget deck, it's really worth your value, especially when you're trying to uh, fit in the space for grade ones. If you really don't want to run the draw PGs, you can take out um, Gareth, I guess, for the grade one PGs, and you can substitute these for the regular draw triggers, the vanilla ones, or crit triggers. Probably not crits because draws are really good because you really want to see hand. But highly recommend you get the draw PGs. So Halo Shield Mark, when you place from hand, protects your unit for the for the battle. And lastly, Elixir Sommelier, heal trigger. Uh, standard, you know, gotta run them heals in your deck. And that's basically it for the deck. And lastly, of course, you know, you gotta run your Excel markers. You, you only need four in my opinion. I've never gone beyond the four Excel markers. An Excel deck. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the deck. So, I guess just a little example. Kind of already explained it before, but why not? So, we got Pelinor, Mock Slash, and where are you at, Dindrain? There you are. So, pretty much what you can do is let's say, you know, another thing you probably don't want to do, I know it's tempting, uh, but you don't want to call Mock Slash Dragon to an Excel circle because. A lot of times you call units on top of other units to your scale circles, and you don't want to lose Mock Slash Dragon that way. So, I uh, highly recommend if you're going to, when you're playing your Mock Slashes, call them to the non Excel rear guard circles. So, if, um, say, Dindrain's on an Excel marker, you know, or like this is your hand, and you call these out. So, what you can do is you can call this from hand, you can swing with it, and then you can use Pelinor's skill to bounce it back to your hand. And then you can use uh, Mock Slash 
to attack with it, and then call Dindrain back, use its skill to Soul Blast and Counter Charge. And then you can attack with Dindrain again, and because Pelinor's skill is not once per turn, you can use it again to Counter Blast and bounce Dindrain back again. So, helping you keep the Dindrain in your hand, so you can keep, you know, you do just Soul Blast it twice, um, helps beef up Tornus, which needs, you know, so you can maybe, if you have another Mock Slash, you can call out a Tornus, swing with that, you know. So those are the kind of things you can do with this deck. So it's really fun, uh, really budget. Of course, you're not running Ezel, so there's no really expensive cards to play here. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys like this deck. If you have any other recommendations for this Pelinor deck that I have, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and see you all later. Bye.